Hi, I'm Chris Kovach and I'm the Regional Sales Consultant in Northeastern Florida for Toby Dynavox. This is the third of three videos uh, trying to help in the positioning, calibration, and adjustment to the gaze settings for the I-Series units, uh, including the I-Series, the PCI Mobile, the PCI Go, and the PCI Mini. So what we've accomplished so far in the first two videos was proper positioning, proper calibration, and now we're going to go into the speech software and I'm going to use Communicator 5 as my uh, speech software and we're going to adjust the settings and I'm going to show you what is currently available within the software to try and personalize it. <clears throat> so if I bring up Communicator 5, we'll see that I'm just on a random uh, set of pages. So your page may look different than mine. What I want to do is I want to go into my quick menu. So if you're on an iSeries device, on the left side of the device, you want to select the three buttons, the three dots, and it will bring up the quick menu guide. If you're on a computer, you can right click uh, or hit control M to get to this menu. Now, depending on which version of Communicator 5 you're running, if you've uh, completed all of your updates, we're going to enter into what is now called our advanced settings. If you were running a version prior to Communicator 5.2, you will be running uh, this setting right here. Instead of advanced settings, we'll say caregiver settings. It still takes you to the same thing. We've just uh, renamed it. So we go into our advanced settings, and we'll see that we want to initially start with our uh, input method, and we want to verify that we currently have gaze selection turned on. So if uh, you had touch selection or switch scanning turned on, you want to make sure you have gaze selection or gaze interaction turned on. And what we want to do now is go into our interaction settings. So when we go into our settings, what you'll initially see is the basic button will be highlighted on the left-hand side, and you'll be able to toggle on and off your track status box. You could start a new calibration from here, which we do not want to do at this time. Once we've gotten a solid calibration, we don't need to change that calibration unless something physically changes uh, with the user. New glasses, uh, glasses on or off, contacts in or out, that kind of thing. Uh, and if that's the case, we would probably want to set up a separate user profile for each one of those situations rather than doing a calibration every time something changed. Uh, so what I mean by that is I personally wear contacts and glasses. I would set myself up with one user uh, with glasses and one user with contacts. And I would calibrate myself separately for each one and then toggle back and forth between them when needed. Uh, the last thing you have is the ability to pause. And as you can see here, I have my little pause. Um, so this may be helpful if you are modeling uh, on the page or we're kind of just looking around and we're getting used to what's on our page. We may want to have pause turned on so they're not making false selections uh, as the customer is simply navigating or trying to learn the screen. So I will leave my pause on for now because it is tracking my eyes. Uh, what I want to do is now go over to the activation. And this is where we can choose whether or not we want to have dwell which means we have to literally dwell on the button for an extended period of time to make the selection. Here's where we can choose what that selection is, what that time is going to be. So if we go in, we can make the dwell time shorter or longer, depending on what's going to work best for that customer. And this may take some playing around with and uh, some tweaking. As you get more comfortable, I would expect the dwell time to probably come down. So the lower the number, the faster you'll make the selection. The higher number, the slower it's going to take for that selection to take. You can also select the keyboard dwell time separately from dwell times for the rest of the buttons. So if you're comfortable with a keyboard or if you're uncomfortable with a keyboard, you can make the buttons uh, select slower or more quickly uh, depending on your level of comfort. You can also access via switch. So if you have a switch plugged into the device, you can look at the button you would like to select and then physically hit an external switch with a hand, a knee, uh, a finger, whatever that may be to actually make the button selection. And lastly, we have Blink. Um, Blink allows you to set a duration time so that when you're looking at the button, you have to make a purposeful blink of, in this situation, I have it set between 200 milliseconds and 1,000 milliseconds. So that means I have to break the signal from my eye series by blinking so I have to keep my eyes closed for a period of time between 200 and 1,000 milliseconds for it to act like I'm clicking that button. 
Blink and Dwell are probably the two most common access methods at this point. I'm going to use Dwell because that is what defaults. Uh, so it's what most of you are going to see uh, when you first start up the unit. But please feel free to come in and explore and find out what works best for you guys. Next is Windows Control. Uh, this is more advanced uh, for controlling the Windows environment. Uh, if you're going out onto the internet or trying to activate things on your desktop or potentially even play third-party games. Uh, we will address this later on in a different set of videos uh, as it is beyond the typical getting started video. Okay, so if we hit our down arrow here, we get into some dwell feedback. So this allows you to change the color of the dot. So you have the ability to maybe go to orange if the red's not something you really like. You can change the size of the dot and you can actually change the way the feedback type is set up. So from default, uh, the dot color is red, the size is medium, and it uses a clock feature as its feedback type, meaning it starts at 12, and when it goes all the way around to 12 again, that's as if you're clicking the button. You can set up a shrinking so that it starts with a large circle and then shrinks down to the middle, and that's when you know it's going to make the selection, or you can make the feedback invisible. Uh, you would set these or adjust these separately. So if you did have dwell and you selected a different dot color of orange, um, you'll see that it does pull that over for my switch and blink as well, but you can change the sizes uh, independently as well. And this allows you to change your selected profile. So right now I'm just on my Chris K profile, which is my main user, and I would recommend that you uh, are on your standard user as well. So we can close out of here. Actually, I need to unpause it. So I'm going to go back into my settings, and I'm going to hit unpause. And now I'm going to navigate with just my eyes. So we can see I'm making that selection with my eyes. There we go. OK, so now you can see how the dwell feature works. As I'm looking at something, you see that it's going around in a circle. I need to be suctioned. And for some, this may be difficult to hold for a period of time. This circle might be moving too quickly. So again, if I wanted to slow that circle down, I can go into my settings, my gaze interaction settings, my activation tab, and I want to change that millisecond delay. So maybe I'm new to this, and I want to just kind of take it slow and kind of get a feel for it. So I'm going to go up to maybe 1,400 milliseconds. And now when I go in, we can see that it takes a little bit longer for that I circle to dedication. go around. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So now I'm going to show, I'm going to go back into my settings and I'm going to show you how switch actually, or not switch, I'm sorry, how um, blink actually works. I'm going to leave this at 200 and 1,000. And I'm actually going to change my feedback type as well because that looked a little bit difficult. Uh, it was a little bit harder for me to see. Okay. So now I'm on blink. So as I look at uh, my buttons, you'll see I'm not making a selection. Right now I'm purposefully not blinking. Or if I am blinking, um, I'm trying to blink rather quickly. And I actually made that selection an error. So what I want to do is play with this time so that I'm comfortable that I can look around on the screen and then when I'm ready to select positioning I can make a blink and please turn me onto my back lay flat please turn me to the left okay so that covers most of the basics uh, if you guys have any questions please feel free to email or call us and we'll be happy to help you out Thanks and have a great day.